come on in sit down sit down grab you a snack or something first of all um this is the first film session of the week the first of three and before we get started let's hit the war chant for being undefeated A lot of teams can't say that they're 3-0, and so let's enjoy that. But uh, let's get into some film. We knew that going into this game that we were going to take a look at Robert Quinn and how he was going to be as a pass rusher now. Uh, last year, the defense really didn't get going until about week five or so. You know, we had that weird, uh, you know, shootout with the Lions. And, you know, there was a game where we gave up some points, uh, some big yards against the Texans. But we really weren't top tier until that pass rush really settled down and the rest of the defense started to fit that mold. I think that's what's going to happen this year you want to help anthony brown you want to help cheeto okay well you give him some pass rush pressure up front right and we knew that moving forward with uh robert quinn so he's going to be our right defensive end now off the rip something that the uh dolphins did a bunch of we're going to talk a little bit about dolphins offensive blocking schemes and things like that um they left two extra guys in to protect because they didn't want um they didn't want us to get that much pressure on josh they took the chance of we're going to run our three receivers out again Against your however many DBs, and we'll just see what happens. Um, now, was that an effective strategy? No, because they would get us on some plays like this where Shido got beat there. They would get us on some plays, but you know you can't continue to run that kind of offense because at some point we're going to uh, we're going to adjust to it. Now, what happened? What happened here? is that you see Jalen Smith, Van Der Esch, and, um, and Jeff Heath just kind of hanging around in the box. Now, why are they doing that? Well, because the guys that they would be covering are right there and right there. So they're there just in case something happens. Now, later on, we did make the adjustment that um, later on that if they were going to keep guys in to block, that we would just bail these guys out and make them a part of pass coverage. But this is early in the game. Uh, but this is how they took um, Robert Quinn and D-Law. Um, this is how they took pressure away from him. And it worked a little bit, but later on, we'll you know see things a little different. Uh, let me show you that right now. What I eventually noticed was when they when they kept in the extra blockers, that's when they were going to hold the ball long and try to attack downfield. Um, but when Robert Quinn got his one on one matches, you know, that's when we really um, saw Josh Rosen get rid of the ball quickly. And it was something that really upset my poor little heart. I was really upset because we see Robert Quinn just flying off the football and just almost getting that sack. And what I like about it is that, you know, it's not like we just saw him flying off the ball like some of the times and he would get pressure. You you know every other play or something like every single play Robert Quinn was um was coming off the football and he was blazing and it's plenty of examples to where you know Robert Quinn you would think he would get the sack but he's just almost kind of sort of just not really almost there almost there balls gone and it started to make me sick because the pressure is there. The ball get off is there. The it's, 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 you know, he's, he's one step away from actually being there. So when Robert Quinn really gets in the mid season form, like he just kind of got to work on finishing, but in terms of flying off the football, you know, using hands properly, we see him going for this nasty swipe right here, attacking the outside hand of our, um, of our left, left tackle here. Cool. Bending the edge. Robert Quinn is really good at bending the edge, man. It was just, oh, yeah. They even held him right here, man. My man was holding Robert Quinn. They ain't even call it. Um, but what that tells me is that you know if we play against another team and you know they may not get rid of the ball quick they may it may be a situation where they you know where they hold it for just one extra second we may run it we may run into a team that you know maybe they don't want to um leave seven guys in to block for the quarterback they just want to run empty and you know i think if we um if we get a little help from the dbs as well to kind of hold that pressure um hold that um hold that receiver just a little bit more then maybe hey man maybe robert quinn can get there a little bit and I'm glad that it actually paid off, man. First of all, we got Robert Quinn on the right. He's he now he's wide nine Quinn. That's after he, uh, you know, says his morphing time and he transforms one time. He transforms from Robert Quinn to wide nine Quinn right here. And when he turns into wide nine Quinn, this upfield get off is just ridiculous. And I and I think it's it's all coupled with um, he gets the one on one with the left tackle and Josh Rosen actually holds the ball for one second extra. Normally the ball is on like two point five 
five seconds. Let's count it this time. Let's go. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. So right on four Mississippi, um, we get Robert Quinn actually getting there. So hey man, we get these. <laughs> let's let's just make that one step quicker. You know what I mean? And um, that's that that'll probably be where most of our sack production came uh, came from. As a former offensive line, I just know some of the. You know some of the uh, some of the uh, keys or the indicators that we got beat. First of all, um, this offensive line, this off, this left tackle's first step wasn't bad. Boom! This first kick step right here, where he covered a little bit of ground and it was quick. I like that. But then he looked over and he realized how far upfield Robert Quinn actually got to him. And you see how small that second step was. Look at this first step. Then look at how small that second step was. Then you're gonna see him cross his feet. If you see an offensive lineman cross their feet like that right there, dropping their post foot and crossing their feet, you know you got him. Uh, Robert Quinn was just on this dude's back hip faster than he was able to um, faster than. Then he was able to kick, and it made it. It made him turn. And when you turn, your quarterback dad is fried chicken, fam. How about this though? Shouts out to my son Randy Gregory. But when Randy was on the field, he was able to do things like this in the run game. When the offense would inside zone to the right, uh, he would be the backside unblocked guy, kind of sort of quasi, and he would just be able to uh, chase it down from the backside. He would just be able to. Um, he would just be able to come up field and read everything that's going on backfield and then cut that thing real close to the offensive line, get flat right there and make the uh, make the uh, play there. Some guys just aren't athletic enough to make it. Um, some guys will kind of get up field and round a little bit, you know, and that'll kind of throw off a little bit of the of the angle or the approaching speed to actually get there. But uh, Robert Quinn being a savvy veteran, he just flattens that thing out, man. He just makes the play in the run game. Y'all should know better than to not block him like that. Oh boy, this Demarcus Lawrence sack was so nasty and I'm just waiting on him to get a little more consistent in the pass rush game. But oh my goodness, take a look at your boy D-Law at the left defensive end. Y'all know D-Law got the hop skip move, right? The, um, you know, the move where he gets up field, turns his hips towards you, hop, then he slaps your hands down. Look at him fake the hop step, right? Look at him fake the hop step. I ain't came up with a word that I want to call it yet. The the hop slap, his move. Watch him fake it just to get uh, the right tackle uh, going upfield just to spin back inside. Check out your boy. Check out your boy. Uh, wait a minute, man. What are you doing, my guy? Why are you getting twisted all up like that? Press the button. Bro, 61 ain't got to just be spinning all around like that. Why is he going th 360 degrees just to block this guy? Just stay in front of him. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, D-Law was actually a victim of getting double team almost just as much as Robert, uh, Robert Quinn was. So, um, it's good to see him actually get loose and actually get his, um, you know, get his sack in. So hopefully we get a lot more of this. To My cable bill was way too high. I reached out to affordable sticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plug that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan. So I love league pass Sunday ticket and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's affordablesticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the then we got another sack by both guys on your left side here. We got Malik Collins there and Kerry Hyder at your left defensive end. Now, it's impressive by Kerry because he's played left defensive end, right defensive end, three take and one take in this game. So I'm very impressed by him with that. I think that's the reason why he's going to be on this team because he could play everywhere on this D-line because we sure uh, we, sh we uh, sure needed him. But take a look at him right here at the left defensive end. Let's just watch his play. Uh, this actually results in a sack here. Let's watch his play, and then we're going to come back and talk about what he did. Then we're going to take a look at Malik here. Um, Kerry Hyder, like I said, man, he was a starter with the um, with the Detroit Lions. He got like eight sacks one year or something like that. I just find it so impressive. I said this on my morning after show. I find it so impressive that our backup guys are starters. Um, you take a look at Christian Covington, um, Malik Collins right there, uh, Kerry Hyder. Joe Jackson out there is going to 
Uh, is that Joe Jackson or is that okay? That's Robert Quinn. So look, we got four starters across the board right here. D line ain't uh D law not out there. Antoine Woods ain't out there. But we have packages where we can just run four starters and we'll switch it up, put some backups out there. We'll still have four starting caliber D linemen um, out on the field at the same time. I love that. But Kerry Hyde is gonna come off the ball right here and he's gonna turn this thing into a power rush, man. He's gonna get hands inside and you see some get uh some some good bend in his elbows because eventually he's gonna power clean this dude <laughs> he's just gonna get a good little push right there see the little push right there gonna power clean this dude then he 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 needs a secondary move to finish the block he needs a secondary move to complete this rush and he's gonna um do that by swimming over the top right here just real nice finesse after the the power to um start it off with and malik collins just efforted his way into this thing man we just gonna see him dump 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 come in boy <laughs> good job by malik what, what I noticed from Tristan, and you know, Tristan didn't have too many big plays here, but what I did uh, notice from watching the film is that um, uh, he started trusting his eyes a little bit more in the back portion of the game. What I mean by that, let me show you the same play twice, actually. Um, Tristan Hill, this they're, they're going to run this uh, this uh, trap up front. They're going to let Tristan Hill, let me show you the play, because y'all hate when I start talking about the play and I ain't even showed it yet. Y'all got to get over that, but um, they're going to try to trap Tristan Hill, right? So that means that these down linemen are going to let him go. This guard in the center are going to um, let Tristan run free but this uh this wing this tight end kind of guy uh he's gonna um pull kick and that's gonna be the run lane right there tristan hill is not gonna see him coming so he gets the the free shot at tristan in the hip right there now tristan was reading this thing tristan was looking tristan was doing um you know central florida things right and you know rod wants us to get up field rod wants us to bust ass quickly rod wants us to get to a certain point right behind the line of scrimmage like right there he wants us to get there fast then read um Tristan got caught reading and guessing and he got trapped because of it right now now that's a typical rookie mistake what I like about it is that he learned from it watch this I like that he learned from it and you know somebody probably probably got in his ear like hey dude get up field like your job as as, as, a, as a D lineman especially as one of these interior guys get up field we don't read here we don't read in Dallas you know and you know this is this is his first game playing playing so that makes sense but boy don't this play look different than that last play <laughs> Oh, goodness, don't that look different? Now, the structure is the same, right? This center and this left guard, they're going to let him run free. They're going to try to pull this guy to kick him and, and catch him slipping. But Tristan, you know, now we when we when we talked about Tristan and the draft process, we talked about his ball get off. We talked about his burst. We talked about his, about his quickness and speed. And that boy gets up field in a hurry. Now, what's going to happen is Tristan is going to get older. He's going to evolve. He's going to get stronger. And he's going to keep that athleticism. And what's going to happen is he's going to stop thinking and he's going to play. He's going to get up field and he's going to do a lot more things like this but uh that's that's going to be towards the, towards the end of the season though but um let's keep watching the film for now <clears throat> and the last thing i wanted to show you was um two fantastic plays from your right side from your right defensive end and your right defensive tackle we're going to take a look at joe jackson right here he's going to get some pressure really going up the middle he's going to get his hands up he's going to bat the football down good job mean joe green um fantastic play by him uh, getting the uh, the uh, bull rush, you know, you know, just uh, having a a power rush, but then keeping your eyes up to actually bat the ball down when when uh, Rosen gets the ball out, and then on the very next play, Christian Covington. And if y'all watch my Christian Covington film when I uh, broke it down when he played with the Texans, this is what I mean. He's another starter on this line here. Uh, we talk about Christian Covington when he played with the Texans. He got a lot of pass deflections right on this very next play. Um, Joe Jackson did it. Then he's gonna get a little bit of penetration, get his eyes up final quarterback he's gonna he's gonna better pass down too so um i think we had a pretty solid day i think everybody on the d-line got some and that's what i really like uh you know quinn dorns dorns supposed to have like four sacks by now but dorns has got to learn how to finish but we'll talk about that a little bit later but uh d-law got some uh you know Hyder collins you know like everybody got a little bit of the pie today um so i'm 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 thankful for that in terms of you know things that are that our uh, D-line did. Now, do we, you know, do we have a lot to work on? Do we have things to fix? Sure. I think by the time we get in mid-season form, everybody hashtag mid-season form. By the time we uh, we get to that, then the pass rush will be here. The D-line will be dominant versus the run, just like we were last year. And, you know, with, you know, with comes good trench play, uh, you know, the, the secondary will play a little better. So 
that's my thoughts on that but uh hey man like the video subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when i drop random videos in the middle of the week just like this this is our first film session of the week i normally drop three if you're brand new here i probably got a live stream coming up later and maybe some saints analysis with my saints youtube guy but we'll cross that road whenever we get there y'all hold it down for the doski woski and the peace whiskey man salute after canceling my cable, I saved $2,400 this year by switching to Beast TV through channelsforcheap.com. Some people pay $200 plus a month. I paid $120 a year. Or you can go $15 a month if that's what's convenient for you. You get 2,500 HD channels. A thousand of those are in English, and there are plenty of other international channels, TV guides, and we get all the sports. One of my favorite things is this multi-screen feature. So if I don't know what I want to watch, I can tune into four different channels at one time. That you can watch on four different devices, and it's available on Fire Stick, Smart TVs, Tablets, and if you're on the go, you can watch TV on your phone. Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. Because if you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com, hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that's subscribing on my Patreon. Just one dollar a month month would increase production and the frequency of uploads basically that means more content for you for less than a bag of almond m ms you can support the channel call dibs on requests for future videos and you can have access to patreon exclusive material like my throwback film sessions that's patreon.com slash vach lombardi i appreciate the support doski woski salute